Hello everybody. Um, so this is the promised video on Coast's case studies. Um, and uh, I'm trying out a funky new format in PowerPoint. <laughs> Not that funky, but uh, just trying different things. So um, a few of you have been asking questions about case studies and uh, yes, you're, I, I would say you're now in a position where you know enough about coasts uh, in order to do that. Apologies for those of you that took coasts at GCSE and have been feeling that way for some time. But um, I try to sort of treat everyone equally and not everyone has studied coasts. So um, let's start then with a list of the case studies. Some of these there are alternatives available. And the, uh, once we've been through this slide, there is a slide about each one of these case studies where I will talk about the alternatives in more depth. If you think you've got other alternatives where I haven't suggested one, my best advice is to run that by your teacher um, and say to them, do you think this works as an alternative? Um, and ask their advice on that. Okay, so the answer may well be yes, but I would like to... to uh, get your teacher to make that decision. Okay, so potentially you uh, will have looked at uh, the first four of these to a certain extent already. It depends kind of how life is treating you, how busy you are, how much of this you've been able to do. But we've mentioned Hall Sands, the 2014 storms, the Great Barrier Reef and Dawlish Warren already, uh, which might potentially only leave you, leave you two or three left. Okay, Hall Sands. Hall Sands came up quite early on in the module when we're talking about factors affecting the rate of erosion, which uh, you then did as a 15 mark question. One of the factors that can affect the rate of erosion is whether there has been dredging, which is um, humans removing sediment from the beach floor sorry, the sea floor, um, and because coastal systems, that kind of causes chaos. It's not a particularly big case study, it's just worth knowing a little bit about, and in case you can't be bothered to do a Google search yourself, I have put um, a couple of links. This PowerPoint is just called Case Studies, and it's in the Coast folder, so it should be pretty easy to find. Okay, we've also talked about the 2014 storms. They came up in the YouTube Live that I did this morning. And um, as a result of the YouTube Live, Nick very kindly found some really good links, which he sent to his students. I've then forwarded them to my students. I've also put some on here. Now, please don't get the impression, because of all that, that this is a massive case study. It's not... Shh. Excuse my dog. It's not a particularly big case study, it's just that some of you might find videos a bit more useful, some of you might find the Met Office summary a little bit more useful. The 2014 storms come up in year one and year two, um, neither in a particularly big way, but they are just quite uh, an important groundbreaking event in all sorts of ways. I didn't mean the pun about groundbreaking, by the way. <laughs> um, potentially, your most recent work, depending on where you're at in this, has been coral reefs and mangroves, in which case you probably have had a look at the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. Some of you may even have looked at the Great Barrier Reef um, within global governance, because it is in fact a case study for global governance and for coasts. I've let my dog out now, so she might leave us alone. Um, it's quite important. Uh, on the screen in front of you, it tells you what you're supposed to cover, and there are um, a suggested few links. Right, so we're, we've mentioned this, but not in any detail. Dawlish Warren, even it, some of you might make the decision to use Dawlish Warren instead of Lyme Regis, fine, um, I'll talk to you more about that in a minute, but even if you use Lyme Regis, I would still like everybody to know um, a little bit about Dawlish Warren, specifically for the first two bullet points, please. Um, sand dunes are important coastal landforms, they're important uh, for biodiversity, they're important ecosystems, they're natural coastal defences, 
basically sand dunes are really quite important. If you kill the vegetation, you lose your sand dunes because the only thing holding the sand together is the plants, the roots of the plants. So humans tend to walk on uh, top of the plants or have barbecues or fires and do all sorts of things that kill the plants and then you start to lose your sand dunes. And they're working really, really hard at Dawlish Warren to try and protect the sand dunes. Now, I mentioned this in the soft engineering PowerPoint for coastal management. Some of you may have been there on field trips in the past. Um, so it's not a big case study, but it's just one of those, it's really worth knowing if sand dunes come up as an exam question. Now, Lyme Regis. I'm su suggesting Lyme Regis because it ticks all the boxes um, well, but there are possible alternatives here. The thing to remember is what does this case study need to cover? And that's the third bullet point on the screen in front of you. So this case study needs to cover the positive impacts of coastal processes. So what on earth could the positive impacts of coastal processes be? Well, if you didn't have coastal processes, you wouldn't have beaches. Beaches are popular with tourists. Tourists bring in money. So you've got all of that stuff. I deliberately chose Lyme Regis partly because it's not very far away, but also because of the fossils. So Lyme Regis is part of the Jurassic Coast. It's a really popular place to go fossil hunting, which attracts more visitors, makes more money. Um, so coastal processes can actually encourage tourism, visitors, all that kind of stuff. But we also want the negative impacts of coastal processes and what coastal processes are really good at doing is eroding coastlines and Lyme Regis is built on a really rubbish kind of rock that erodes very, very easily. Um, and prior to the new management scheme, there were landslides, there was erosion. Um, it was, you know, really not looking good for Lyme Regis at all. So people were losing their houses, businesses were going um, out of business etc etc and then the third aspect that this case study needs is the management that has been put in place to try and stop the negative impacts now Lyme Regis ticks all of those really really nicely but Sidmouth could be a good shout Holderness could be a good shout to a certain degree I think Dawlish could be so if you know that you've got a GCSE case study that's kind of covering those sorts of things, talk to your teacher about it, ask them, say, do you think that would work? And they'll obviously say yes or no. Um, if you've never done coasts and, or you haven't got your notes and don't remember anything, I would do Lyme Regis just because I know it works. All right, now there's a YouTube clip on there Please watch it if you decide to do Lyme Regis, it's brilliant. Um, it covers so much stuff that you need to know. Uh, it's much more professional than, <laughs> than my attempts at YouTube. Um, there's also, as you can see, another hyperlink. There are pages in the module, there's a PowerPoint in the Coasts folder. You should have plenty of resources. So regardless of whether you do Lyme Regis or not, this case study should be your biggest and most detailed one for the whole module. Right, Abbots Hall Farm. Abbots Hall Farm is um, an example where soft engineering has been dominant. If you decide to do Lyme Regis, what you'll discover is that uh, quite a lot of the management they've put in place there is hard engineering. It's trying to stop natural processes, it involves a lot of concrete very very definitely and what the exam board want you to have is an example of a softer approach a way of kind of working more with nature and uh, I think recreating salt marsh is probably the best example of that so there's a massive scheme in Essex at a place called Abbots Hall Farm but if you'd rather do something closer to home there is the same basic kind of scheme happening in Porlock so particularly if you come from the Minehead Porlock area, by all means do that one instead. Um, but it's entirely your choice, ladies and gents. Okay, so what you would be covering is how did it used to be managed? How is it managed now? And why did they change it? 
Um, and what you'll discover basically for both case studies is it was too expensive to keep managing that piece of coastline and it wasn't valuable enough to build a seawall or put in an expensive hard engineering scheme. We're back to that cost benefit analysis. Lyme Regis is worth it. It's worth tens of millions of pounds of protection. Abbotts Hall Farm and Porlock, sorry, but they're not worth it. So um, it's all about that cost benefit and what should we do. And, and it's that idea of trying to put the right solution in the right place because we can't afford to protect every bit of coastline in the UK. We've got to pick and choose the bits that deserve the money. Okay. And then this one, you don't have to do in year one. You could leave it until year two where we cover hurricanes. Um, we are going to cover storm surges next week. I, I think they're really fascinating things. That I mean, I never want to experience one. I sort of do. But I sort of don't, if you know what I mean. They, they're terrifying things. Um, they're a particular kind of flooding that happens, essentially when the sea comes onto the land, which is not ideal, is it? Let's be honest. And Hurricane Katrina is probably the most famous storm surge in living memory because it made New Orleans fill up like a basin. Um, doesn't need to be a huge case study. Um, I've just included one hyperlink uh, there is also some stuff in the module. So you, you could just do a, a short version this year, maybe um, leave a bit of space to add to it next year, maybe not do it at all and leave it to year two, that's fine. Uh, now, personally, I don't recommend the 1953 um, storm surge in the UK, just because I think it's quite old fashioned. But if you're interested, um, we do get storm surges in the UK and um, they can be pretty horrific. Uh, so I've just included uh, a couple of um, links at the very bottom if you just want to kind of get a sense of how they apply to, to our country. But personally, I think 1953 is a little bit too long ago to really worry. So they are your coastal case studies, ladies and gents. Not too many of them. The most detailed, please, is this one. All right, Lyme Regis or Alternative. All of the others are reasonably short. We're talking like the equivalent of a revision card type length, um, obviously in whatever is your preferred format. Um, so keep those ticking over. I'm not going to give you a deadline for those yet because I need to know when we get to the end of coasts and give you a little bit of time after that. But if you could just sort of keep those ticking over gradually, that would be much appreciated. For now, you could just click through this um, video and watch the link, sorry, watch the, the videos I've linked or just look at the websites. You don't have to put hours and hours into it, but just if you keep dripping it over, it will mean you don't have a mountain to climb uh, at the end. Okay, so that's it for this week. Next week, we will move on to um, storm surges, sea level change, uh, some slightly different topics. Keep the questions coming by email, folks. I'm always happy to receive them. Thanks.